Dream. This is a bit of a different one. This is Dreams. Where you can make your dreams come true. Um, <clears throat> you can make music, you can make paintings, you can make games, you can make sculptures, all sorts of things. If you haven't seen it, I've checked it out. I've done a, some of the tutorials, but not all. And I want to, I don't think I'm going to be able to feel, I won't be comfortable enough to head into these creator, creation tools unless I finish all the tutorials. So that is the goal here. The goal. Hold on, two seconds. Right. All is well. Everything is out. All of the links are out and we shall begin. That snaps there. This is like your little home area where you can just play around. I don't know what you can do there actually. It's, it's, um, don't know. But um, it's just sort of like a hub area thing. Not really much point to it, but um, you can customize it and, you know, have it your own. Um, these are the tutorials. Now, I've done um, the first couple. They're the motion control uh, tutorials. I'm using the PS4 controller. See, even moving it for a slight... It, it is literally off centered. You need to hold the button to snap it center again. Now it's off again. But I've done the logic tutorials. Now I'm on to game gameplay tutorials. Now the logic tutorials I did a while ago. Mm, so hopefully I remember that. But uh, I have no idea what's in store for me here. But we shall see. It's a five part tutorial. Let's do it. This tutorial is all about connectors. Right. Something Cuthbert hasn't quite Does got get the complicated. Hang of. Connectors join objects together in a way that lets them move. Right. We're going to use them to help Connie get to Cuthbert. Well done. First need... things first, though, we need to be precise when using connectors. So let's move turn on the grid snap guide. Down a that way, touch. everything will line up properly. So, go to the assembly menu and open the guide section. Right, so that's the assembly menu. Is it not? Guides. Useful guides and helpers to assemble your creation from grid. Now select the grid icon with the X button. Hold on, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Grid now that grid snap, snap is... Want everything arranged in nicely precise lines, then grid snap is for you. You'll get a visual representation of a grid following you, grab, move things around. When you move something, it'll snap to the grid. Right, I see. So you can draw like an outline using the grid and things will fit into that. And you'll get a plumb line showing you how you've moved it, right, okay. By default, the origins of the grid is dead center of the scene, but you can change it to, cen to center on a specific object, pressing L1 and triangle. To reset it, use a reset grid on the context menu to reset it to the center of the scene. If you grab something which is not aligned to the grid, the visual will turn orange. Right. Press triangle and the object will align to the grid. On uh, any no. objects you move right. and tools you use will snap in line with the grid in the scene. How did I go up? There we go. I remember. You can adjust how fine the grid is using the plus and minus icons on the button. But for this tutorial, hold on. Bill, it's best if you leave the grid size at one. 
Right. Now, let's see how we can make our way to Cuthbert. The best way to find out what needs to be connected is to play the scene and see for ourselves. But instead of switching over to play mode, we can start time in edit mode by clicking R3. Right, okay. Aha. Well, this is odd. The bridge has fallen down, but the second platform is still floating in place. Why is one object floating while the other is falling? Yes, good Click question. Click L3 to rewind time. Let's check the bridge's tweak menu. Remember, tweak menus allow us to see and change the settings for objects in edit mode. Hover your imp over the bridge, hold L1, and press the square button to open its tweak menu. Tweak menus differ depending on what sort of object you're tweaking. L1. The bridge is a sculpture. Right, that's my bad. Sculptures. I missed that. Right, sorry. Tweak menus differ. Settings for ob. Click L3 to rewind time. Right, we've done that, yeah. Let's check the bridge's tweak menu. I close menu. that up, yeah. Remember, tweak menus allow us to see and change the settings tweak for menus. in edit mode. Hover your imp over the bridge. Yes. Hold L1 and press the square button to open its tweak menu. Right, good, I remember. Yeah, I see. Tweak menus differ depending on what sort of object you're tweaking. The bridge How is a sculpture. How do I move this? There we go. Sculptures are pretty complex things, and their tweak menus have lots of pages. Or not. To switch pages, use your imp to select the different tabs at the top. Maybe we'll find something on the physical properties page to tell us why the bridge is falling down. Physical properties. Its icon is a Newton's cradle. Like one of those desk ornaments where the metal balls bash into each other. Yes. Select it with X. This page contains the sculpture's physical properties and attributes. There are lots of buttons and sliders here, but the one we're interested in is the top one. Aha! I thought so. Someone's gone and switched on the movable option. Okay, okay. I admit it. It was me. Well, it wouldn't be much of an adventure if Connie could just stroll across the bridge, would it? Making something movable means it becomes physical. That means that forces in the scene, like okay. collisions, the imp, or in gravity. this case, gravity, can move it. Right. Luckily, we can stop the bridge from falling down by adding a connector to it. Which is exactly what we'll do in the next step, once you're ready to move on. I'm ready to move on. Right, <clears throat> so the movable... So, right. All we need to keep the bridge from falling is a piece of string. Not just any piece of string, though. It's what we in the dream shaping business call a string connector. We'll need to attach the other end to something unmovable, like the blue cylinder above the bridge. Start by moving your imp with the left and right sticks until you can see the top of the bridge and the bottom of the blue cylinder. Make sure time is rewound. Click L3 if it isn't. Now open the assembly menu and select the three connected squares to open the gadgets menu. Whoops. Uh, Look for the button with the joint icon, which will take you to the connect. Pause. Oh. Ah, I see. Sorry, my bad. Right. Continue. Sub menu. Hold on, wait. Where did he go there? Look for the button with the joint icon, which will take you to the connectors sub menu. You can move the menu with your imp by grabbing it with R2. Oh. Select the string button with your imp by grabbing. I, Look for the button with yes. the joint icon, which will take you to the connectors sub menu. You can move the menu with your imp by grabbing it with R2. Select the string button. Its icon is the two circles connected by a wavy line. You'll see that a string connector appears on the tip of your imp. Now let's get connecting. You should always make the first connection from the object that won't move. We call this the parent object. 
In this case, it's the blue cylinder, but it could be something else, like the frame of a door. See the yellow dot on the cylinder? I put that there to show the best place for a connection. So hover over it and press R2 or X to connect the string. Done. The grid snap guide will help you line it up exactly with the yellow spot. When you move your imp now, you'll notice it's tethered to the cylinder. It also has a blue gizmo on the end of it. Now let's stretch that string down to the bridge, all the way to the blue dot. The blue gizmo connects the string to the movable object, which we call the child object. We've done this. Hover over the blue dot. See how the grid snaps it into line? Let's connect the string there with R2 or X. If your bridge isn't in line, just make sure that time is rewound. Now that the blue gizmo is connected, you can press the circle button to unequip the string connector from your imp. And there you have it. The cylinder and the bridge are connected. Click R3 to start time and check that it's working. Aha! How do I...? Well, it looks a bit wobbly, but it's nothing Connie can't handle. Switch over to play mode and have a go. How did I do that again? I think it was straight up start, wasn't it? Yep. When you can get Connie across the bridge to the second platform, return to edit mode and rewind time with L3. Time to get Connie over to the third platform. So, the small pink platform and the blue step aren't much use to her right now. But if we make the platform move backwards and forwards, she okay. can hop onto it and cross over. To do that, we'll need a connector called a piston. Okay. Go to the assembly menu, then the gadgets menu. You'll find the piston in the connector. Speed and strength. Don't forget to start the connector at the parent and finish it at the child. All right, I'll, I'll listen to this guy. It's somewhere near the middle and looks like, well, a piston. piston. Whoa. Oh, if you hover on it for a while, it... Now that it's equipped on your imp, you can start connecting. First, press R2 or X to join it to the blue step which is unmovable, so it's the parent object. I've put a yellow dot on it to show you the best place to connect it. Okay. Next, connect the blue end to the child object, which is the floating platform. See how grid snap keeps the connector perfectly straight? Hover over the blue dot, then press R2 or X. Remember, the child object is the part that needs to be able to move. So when you join a connector to its child, that object will automatically become movable. When you've placed the piston, press circle to unequip it. Done. Click R3 to test the connector. That's more like it. The piston is now moving the platform back and forth. Rewind time with L3. Now Connie might not be too happy if we make her jump on that. So let's calm the piston down a bit. First, open the piston's tweak menu. Hover anywhere over it, hold L1 and press square. If the tweak menu blocks your view of the piston, you can grab it and move it with R2. This white gizmo shows the maximum length and speed of the piston. You can change the speed by adjusting the slider with the clock icon. That's the cycles per minute. Grab the slider by holding X over it with your imp Whoa, and reduce on. the value. The further to the left you move, the faster the number will change. It doesn't need uh. to be exact, 
Somewhere around 15 should do it. But if you want to get a more precise number, you can adjust the slider with the up and down directional buttons instead. 15. Notice how it's slowed down now. Click R3 to see it moving the platform. Aha. When you're happy with the speed, close the tweak menu with the close button or use L1 and circle. Then rewind time with L3. Time to switch over to play mode and test out the scene so far. Make sure the platform isn't moving too fast for Connie to jump on. You can always go back to edit mode and tweak the piston until you're happy with it. Once Connie has made it all the way across, rewind time in edit mode and move on to the, the next step. Yo, what's up? This is Dreams. All right. There's just one more this gap is, um, to cross. Look up PS4 Dreams. You can make step people have made to. uh you can make games. For the plank to drop Hold down, on. we'll need it to pivot like a hinge. Which means we'll need to use a It's a creation tool time. where you can make your own games. Go into the connector section in the assembly menu. Right, so connect. select the icon with the nut on it. That's the bolt connector. Bolt. Now you can connect it I'll, just I'll, like you did with I'll the string and the piston. I'll play some of the games. Oh. And because I'm so nice, I've placed some yellow and blue dots and a sneaky new purple one so that you can see where to make the connections. Okay. They're quite close together this time, so move in closer for a good view. Remember. You can use the grab cam on the R1 button to zoom in close. Yeah, I can zoom around. Hold on. As always, connect the parent object first, the yellow dot. Then you can connect the child object, the blue dot. The grid snap will keep the bolt in a straight line so you don't have to worry about it. Once it's all connected, you can unequip the bolt connector using the circle button. Does it? You've probably noticed that there's a purple gizmo halfway along the bolt. I have noticed. That's the pivot which the bolt rotates around. Click R3 to see how it all works. So if I click R3. Oh, well, that's not right. It looks like we'll need to reposition the pivot to get the plank moving correctly. Click L3 to rewind time and reset the plank. Now go ahead and right. grab the purple gizmo with R2. Move it so it's by the purple dot. While you're grabbing the pivot gizmo with R2, press triangle to align it to the grid. Now grab it with L2 and use the sticks to rotate it so its axis goes through the bottom oh. of the plank. The grid snap so, guide will so line it I up to align it to the grid. Gizmo I with that. R2. Oops. Move it so it's by the purple dot. Right. While so you're grabbing the pivot gizmo with R2, Press triangle to align it to the grid. Now grab it with L2 and use the L2. sticks to rotate it so its axis goes through the bottom of the plank. The grid snap guide will help you line it up exactly. The child object, in this case the plank, Oops. will rotate around that axis. What does it need to be? Once oh. it's all lined up, switch over to play mode to test it out. It was like that, wasn't it? If you've done it correctly, the plank should balance upright. Right, hold on. Connie will need to push the plank down. Unless, of course, the plank isn't long enough. Oh well, switch back oh. to edit mode. Right then. Back and to play mode. Time. We'll sort out the Possess. plank in the next step. Yeah, no, I, I've, I've attached a cord to that because the gravity would suck that down and make it drop. So... It actually hangs by an invisible wire. I'm gonna make a game. A bloody good game. I changed the properties of this and used a piston to make it move. And now, see when you go into play mode, 
all the stuff you've done disappears, so you can't see the you know the guts of the game. So now if I push this, and uh, if I've done that correctly, oh it hasn't reached. Right, so that clearly is a part of the tutorial. Next part of the tutorial. Let's see what he says. To make sure Connie can reach the last platform, we could always make the plank longer, but that's a completely different tutorial. Instead, let's try restricting the bolt's movement. We can do that by giving it an angle limit. First, you'll need to bring up the bolt's tweak menu. So hover over any part of the bolt, hold L1 and press square. You should see the Use Limits button about halfway down. Select it with X. And look at that. Three handles have appeared. Two pale yellow ones and a longer pale blue one. That's not how I've gone, mate. The yellow ones set the range of movement, which is represented by the transparent arc between them. This is well complicated. We need to move one of these yellow handles so it's just a little bit left of vertical. It should look like an 11 o'clock position. Oh. Now move the other yellow Oops. handle to a 3 o'clock position. If your handle doesn't line up exactly, just press triangle while you're grabbing it. This will realign the handle to the grid. The blue handle oh. represents the position of the child object. So you need to line it up with the plank in the 12 o'clock position. Press triangle to realign the handle to the grid if necessary. You can close the tweak menu now and triangle. head into oh, play oh, mode oh. to test the scene. Was it something like that? If everything's working correctly, Connie should be able to reach Cuthbert. Hold on. And Did if I you just... feel like experimenting, you can try out some other connector types. Uh, See what you can come up with. How do I undo then, that? Then, when you're done editing the scene, yeah. go through the door in play mode to finish this tutorial. Let's see if that works. God damn, this is, this is complicated. Right, so... So the idea is that you attach the blue to the, to the actual moving platform and the yellow is like the the arc of where it's gonna go so it's gonna be anywhere past it the one the yellow one pointing up because it's not gonna swing backwards that way but if it falls it'll only go as far as the straight yellow one i put across so i'm gonna what i gathered from that oops oh god that's to go back into edit and snap back back into thing play possess now if i push this huh? i get it so this, that, yellow one, has created an invisible low sort of barrier. It's music next, they said. I'm sure the tutorial said mu music creation next. Well, that might have been part one of five. Physics. Hold on, I don't wanna don't wanna go back to the main Are you watching? Watch shall I show you the type of things people have made before I continue the tutorials? Check this out. Hold on. Um, this gen. This is gen. People have genuinely made this stuff. A western shootout. Um,
car drift. Look at this. I don't think this is a game. I think this is art. I think some. This is just art somebody's made. Oh no! It's, look at this. Somebody, on this is legit. Somebody's made this in dreams. I, I've never seen this before. But um, look how crazy this is. Uh, no way. This is insane. Like you would have had to have created each one of those balls. Can I get a line? Oh, there we go. Huh. This, see how, look how crazy this is. Anyway, that's just for instance, something somebody's made. Oh, watch this. Where is it? Um, Laura, are you watching this? I need to see this. If I can find it. Uh, watch this. Me and Joshua f uh, found this. Where is it? Um, Wait a minute. No, it's not. It's not Star Wars. It'll be. Oops. Find it, hold on. Um, oops. It's got to be on the main page. You won't believe this while somebody's made. You will not believe it. Not to mention it. Resident Evil classic. Wanna see this? Somebody's made this. Look at this. Somebody made that, now everybody's using it. Somebody actually made that beginning in dreams, uploaded it, now you can use this to, to begin your game if you want. I don't think this is gonna be good. <laughs> It's going to be... Oh, look. How do you... Somebody's made this. What? I'm on the wall. Yes. 
I'd have to show you this one. I don't want to say what it is because it'll ruin the surprise, but come on. You will not believe. Oh, that Mario 64. Look at what somebody's made. I've got an idea for a game. Look at this. the end of that sequence if I possess this I wonder if they've actually made the inside no but you could like put together you know, levels you know Said my stream yeah. summary is ready, like I've ended the stream. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, where's the one? What the hell is that? Silent Hills. Night City Drive. Somebody's made port a portal gun. The Last of Us Part 2. Oh, Burning Car. I think this is just a... Um, like a theme. Oh, God. I tried to find... What's that? Lara, Cro Lara Daft. Treasure Hunter. I think what I'm looking for is so good they've taken it down. <laughs> I don't know. Come on, it's got to be one of these. You won't believe it. You will not believe. Sonic the movie trailer, the game. <laughs> oh, damn it. It was so good, it should be like the main, it should be on the main, the first one, and stay there. Batman. What's that? I gotta, I gotta look for it. Um, what's that? 
Stardew Valley. Where's Wally in space? I can't believe I can't find it. Oh, never mind. <coughs> Shit. Oh, I gotta find it. I have to find it. It was amazing. And I can't believe somebody's made it. Hold on. Might be no. See, that's it. Somebody's made the PlayStation start up, and you can use it in your own thing. Thing. Hold on, I might have. I might have like bookmarked it. Somehow. How do you find the stuff that I've? Oh, this, here we go. Was it this? I don't think it was. Is it this? No, it's not this, but it should be similar, I expect. Test. How does pe how have people done this? I need to find the one. It was in a different collection, maybe. I need to be doing the tutorials actually. What the hell is this? Play. Different difficulties. And this nut, so somebody's made this. What is this? this no way What's the buttons no way Insane, isn't it? Look at this. Oh, look at that, mate. I've damaged that one. 
I think. What's the physics bugging out? I'm so glad that was a ramp, babe. Glad that was a ramp. Anyway, that's nuts. It's crazy. I want. I really want to find the one. What's this? Is it this? No, this is... Wow. Anyway, there was an X-Wing versus TIE Fighter demo thing that I played with, that was insane. Oh, I wanted to show you that. It's annoying. It's annoying that I can't find it. Right, back to tutorials. Oops. Right, so... Um... Animation tutorials. <coughs> to make animations. It looks like Cuthbert is in a spot of bother. I think. Connie needs our help to get across these platforms so she can rescue Cuthbert. But obviously, you've got to play so out how about the. We um, add a little handmade animation to get her there play out the scenarios need to, go into play mode to, to see that Connie won't be able to make this no. jump yeah so let's animate that floating ledge down to her using an action recorder okay action recorders are super easy to use just stamp one in your scene and it will record anything you move with the imp and we mean anything it will even that. record you moving or tweaking gadgets we bet oh. better get uh. going. Connie's getting really impatient. You know what cones are like. Go to the assembly menu. Press a square button if it's not already open. Then head to the animate menu. The animate icon is a clapperboard. That thing they use in movies before the director says action. Now you get action. to be the director, and you can use these tools and gadgets to My animate regular objects. Spielberg. Select the action recorder, the icon with a film strip and a plus sign on it. Oh, I can record voice as well. You'll now have an action recorder gadget on your own. Right. Stamp it down, somewhere near the floating ledge. A progress bar will appear at the top of the screen, along with a record button on the right. Right. Also, your imp will turn red. This means you're ready to start recording. Okay. Don't worry. Recording won't start until you begin moving or changing things. When you're ready, grab the floating ledge with R2. Move it slowly towards Connie using the motion sensor function or the sticks. You'll notice that the bar starts to fill, recording your every move. Don't worry. That was it's bad. not a time limit. <laughs> The bar fills up as a visual indicator of something being recorded, so take your time. When you let go of R2, the recording will pause. If you move your view or use the grab cam, that won't be recorded. 
But if you've started time with R3, recording will continue when you let go of R2. That's why it's important to rewind or pause time before recording anything. That way, your that way, your action recorder only contains what you put into it. When you've finished recording, select the stop recording button in the context menu. Hold on, whoops. I think I've got to do that again. No. No, that's done. So, right. Or you can use a shortcut, L1 and circle button Oops. to exit the action recorder. Your imp will go back to normal to show that recording has stopped. Click R3 to play back your animation. Handmade animations are always a bit wobbly, but practice makes perfect. Yeah, I should have. Calibrating your imp can help when using the motion sensor function. Just hold your controller in a comfortable position, then hold the options button for a few seconds. <clears throat> in the next step, I'll show you how to edit a recorded animation. Okay. Anything you record is stored in the action recorder gadget. If you hover over the floating ledge, the action recorder will pulse. Select the action recorder with X. What? X and dashed oh. lines will appear on the object. X animated with it. It'll also show the animation path. That's this dashed line. Yeah, that wiggly line. If you're not happy with your animation, doing it is easy. First, rewind time with L3. Then hover over the action recorder gadget, hold L1 and press X. Now we can start recording again. Select the retake button in the context menu to replace the old animation. Okay. Now you can record a new one. Move the platform so it stops in front of Connie. Hold on, you can undo actions you perform using the left directional button. But it won't undo any time that has passed. So it's better to use the retake button to undo animations. Move the floating ledge from the upper platform down to Connie. Don't worry if the animation's too slow or too fast. We can fix that later. Make sure you press the stop recording button when you're done. Spend a little time practicing with the action recorder. In the next step, I'll show you how to tweak your animation. It's better. Another way to edit animations is to tweak them. Hold L1 and press the square button over the action recorder gadget to open its tweak menu. Here you can see all the tweaks for the action recorder. By default, the playback mode is set to loop, so it plays the animation over and over again. But you can set them to play once, sustain, or to ping pong. Once will play the whole animation just one time. Sustain will play the animation for as long as the action recorder has power. If it loses power, it will stop, then it will continue from that point when it's powered again. Ping Pong plays the animation forward once, and then plays it in reverse, then forward, That's then backwards, wrong. and so on. That sounds like a good option for our floating ledge. Select Ping Pong with X. Click R3 to start time and play the animation. You can also change the animation speed to make it slower or faster. Grab the slider with X and use your imp to change the speed. If you want to explore more of the action recorder tweaks, you can. 
If you hover over any button for a few seconds, a more info tip will explain what that tweak does. To close the tweak menu, just hold L1 and press the circle button anywhere over it. And of course, you can undo any changes you make by pressing the left directional button. Switch to play mode to test your changes. It's crazy, isn't it? When you're ready, come back to edit mode and start the next step. Now that Connie's made it up to the higher platform, how will she get back down to the next one? First, rewind time with L3. You probably already know about cloning objects, but do you know that you can clone their animations along with them? Hmm. I'm sure you remember how to clone. No, but I if don't. not, L1. just hold L1 and grab the ledge you animated with R2. Once you've made the clone, release L1 then move the ledge to the other side and release R2 to place it. Right, Not so only did you clone the ledge, but you also cloned its animation. Ah. Click R3 to start time. Now we just need to flip it so that it moves in the correct direction. First, make sure you rewind time. Grab the platform with R2. Then click L3 to flip it horizontally. Depending on where you grabbed it, you might have to move it closer to the other platform after flipping. You may also need to realign it with triangle before releasing R2 to put it back down. Oh. Now click R3 to start time and the platform should move in opposite directions. Both animations are stored in the same action recorder. So if you retake or delete the action craziness. recorder, it will affect both animations. Now go into play mode and see if Connie can make it across both gaps. Switch back to edit mode when you're Just ready to move on. Sped it up a bit, shouldn't I? Right, next. Now let's get Connie to Cuthbert and get them through the door before Cuthbert has a total meltdown. I've placed a shiny helper cube. Let's call it Cuthbot. That holds up the next platform, but it's not very animated at the moment. To get it to walk back and forth towards the exit, we need to use Record Possession. It allows you to possess puppets ah, and record a performance with them. Open the assembly menu then go to the animate menu. Select record possession. It's the button with the sock puppet icon. Your imp can now possess the puppets in the scene. In the context menu, you'll see the count in button. When this is selected, you'll get a three second count in before recording starts. Press R2 over the cuffbot to possess the puppet and start the countdown. When the count reaches zero, the possession recorder begins recording. Unlike the action recorder, it records constantly. So time will be recorded even when the cube isn't moving. Walk the Cuthbot around the obstacles to the final platform. Pause for a moment, turn around, then walk back to where the Cuthbot started. Starting and ending at the same place, will help to make the animation loop smoothly. Press the circle button to depossess. 
You'll notice that the recording pauses when you depossess. Select stop recording in the context menu to exit the possession recorder. Oops. Once you've stopped recording, click L3 to rewind time, then R3 to start time and watch what you've recorded. In the last step, I'll show you how to edit the recorded possession. Hmm, fair enough. You may have noticed a possession recorder gadget has appeared next to the cuff bot. When you're using record possession, this gadget appears the moment you press the stop recording button. Select it with X to view the animation path. The possession recorder gadget also lets you edit and tweak the animation. Hold L1 and press X. X over the possession recorder to scope in and edit it. Just like the action recorder, you can choose to retake the animation by selecting the button in the context menu. To stop editing the possession recorder, select stop recording in the context menu. Or hold L1 and press the circle button to quickly scope out. You can also tweak the possession recorder with L1 and the square button. It has exactly the same options as the action recorder. Experiment with the recorder and the different tweak options. The springiness. Remember, you can see more info about the tweak settings by hovering over them for a few seconds. Close the tweak menu by pressing L1 and the circle button anywhere over it. Once you're done editing, switch over to play mode to test out the completed scene. Then Connie can navigate to the last platform and help Cuthbert through the door to complete the tutorial. <clears throat> how could I make this work? What I need to learn is how to you know, look all those tiles and stuff like may actually make things. Right. I did speed it up a bit. How did somebody make like a shooter? That's what I'm wondering. Keyframes and timeline tutorials. Yo. If you've mastered the basics of animation, perhaps you're ready to learn how to create more complex motion. You, you'll learn about keyframes, you'll learn how to blend them and place them on timelines. Audio tutorials. Art tutorial. That's where you start to sculpt and whatnot. Character creation tools. Dreams Masterclass. Magad. Let's go straight in. You might be able to animate wobbly platforms with the action recorder, but keyframes are where animation gets serious. Nice try, Cuthbert, but leave the dream shaping to the experts. We're going to use keyframes to animate the platforms so Connie can reach the exit. A keyframe records any changes you make to an object, such as its position, tweak menu settings, or anything else you can think of. Then it stores those changes in a gadget that you can switch on and off. Okay, let's use keyframes to help Connie get across those platforms. First, go to the assembly menu. If it's closed, press the square button to open, open it. Look for the animate button, which has a clapperboard icon, and click on that. Keyframes.
start by selecting the keyframe gadget, which is the one with the diamond and the plus sign. Then stamp it in the scene above the first gap. You'll notice there's now a stop recording button in the context menu. Yep. And your imp now looks like a red keyframe. That means the keyframe gadget is recording any changes you make in the scene. But unlike the action recorder, it only records the state of things, not a period of time. It's probably easier to understand if we put it into practice. Let's try it on the block that's on the ground in front of Connie. Grab it with R2 and place it between the first two platforms. You'll see some dashed lines appear on the block. These tell you that the keyframe has recorded the change you've made to the object. You can move it as many times as you like. It'll only store the final result. If that's not the outcome you wanted, you can always undo your last change with the left directional button. The next bit is super important. To finish and store your changes in the keyframe, you need to select the stop recording button in the context menu. Select it now and see what happens. That's right. The block has snapped back to its original position. That's because the keyframe isn't active right now. But we can still see what's recorded by selecting the gadget with X. Right. There, the block is back to where you moved it. You'll notice the keyframe doesn't record how things moved, just where they moved to. Make sure you deselect the keyframe before moving on. You can do that by pressing the circle button. In the next step, I'll show you how to Oops. use your keyframe in the scene. Now that you've recorded a keyframe, let's look at how to activate it. See the trigger zone above the first platform? Select it with X to check its area of effect. Okay, it looks like the zone stretches across the whole gap. Deselect it with the circle button. Then use the sticks or the grab cam to move in closer to the gadget. You'll notice an output port on its side, labelled Detected. This sends a signal when it detects a possessed puppet like Connie. We need to connect this to the keyframe, so select the port with R2 or X to create a wire. Then stretch it to the keyframe gadget with your imp and use R2 or X to connect the wire to the power port. I see. So when I step the near that, signal will switch on the keyframe when it detects Connie. Try it out in play mode. I understand. Just press the options button and select the controller right. I walk forwards. <laughs> see, as soon as Connie enters the trigger zone area, the block springs into place. Well, it works okay, but the animation's a bit fast, don't you think? We can do something about that after you take Connie across. Head back into edit mode, rewind time with L3, and I'll show you how to add smoothing to the keyframe in the next step. Okay then, we've made a simple keyframe animation. Now it's time to smooth it out and make it look better. Like almost everything in Dreams, keyframes can be tweaked. So open this one's tweak menu, hold L1, then press the square button over it. You'll see two sliders at the bottom, slow power up and slow power down. These determine how long it takes for the keyframe to turn on fully. Hover over the slow power up slider now and hold X. Then move your imp to the right to increase the value. Let's set it to one second for now. You can set slow power down to any value you like. 
Then close the tweak menu by selecting the cross icon in the corner. Or you can hold L1 over the menu, then press the circle button. Let's see what that looks like in play mode. Ah yes, that looks a lot smoother. If you're happy with the new animation, switch back to edit mode. Rewind time with L3 and move on to the next step. It looks like the bridge across the next gap has collapsed. We could just move it back into place, but where's the fun in that? Let's perform a little bit of magic instead. Mm, Go to the assembly menu and select another keyframe from the animate menu. Stamp it above the gap with R2 or X. Oh, that's not lit. Now see if you can reassemble the bridge. Grab the first part and move it back where it should be. One of the great things about keyframes is that they can affect multiple objects. So you can put the other half of the bridge back too. Oops. Then select stop recording from the context okay, well. menu to store your changes. Once recording stops, the bridge will go back to its original position. So, select the keyframe with X if you want to see those changes again. One. Hmm. I could have done a better job at positioning the bridge. Nothing to worry about though, because editing a keyframe I is can't. easy. Just select the edit keyframe button in the context menu. It's got the same icon as a keyframe gadget. This allows you to make changes to the keyframe. You can remove things from a keyframe by pressing the triangle button over them. Hold on. Got the So, select the keyframe with X if you want to see those changes again. Hmm. I could have done a better job at positioning the bridge. Nothing to worry about though, because editing a keyframe is easy. Just select the edit keyframe button in the context menu. It's got the same icon as a keyframe gadget. This allows you to make changes to the keyframe. You can remove things from a keyframe by pressing the triangle button over them. And now the bridges are back on the ground. Let's put them back into place, but this time, make sure they're a bit straighter. I did. Remember, when you're grabbing things, you can realign them by pressing the triangle button. There we go. Much better. You can select stop recording again to finish editing this keyframe. Then move on to the next step when your bridge is in place. The bridge's new position is already stored in the keyframe, so all we need now is a way to activate it. That's where this trigger zone will come in handy. Let's select it to see what zone it covers. Hmm, it's not in the gap this time, it's over this button. First, create a wire from the trigger zone's output using R2 or X. Then stretch it over to the keyframe and connect it to its power port. When Connie steps on the button now, the keyframe will be switched on. But what happens when she leaves the trigger zone? Let's test it in play mode to find out. So, that'll happen. Just as I thought. When Connie moves away, the keyframe switches off. Let's head back to edit mode and see what we can do about that. Of course, we could just move the trigger zone into the gap. Hello but this there. is an animation tutorial. So let's see if we can use the keyframe's tweak menu to fix the problem. Right. Open it now with the L1 and square button shortcut and have a look at the options there. Hovering over the buttons will bring up their names. The one we're interested in 
is called Keep Changes. Right. With this option turned on, any changes made by the animation will be permanent. So once Connie activates the keyframe, the bridge will stay in its new position until you rewind the scene. Right. Since we're already in the tweak menu, this let's is add some smoothing like... to that animation. Oh. I think I'll set it to two seconds this time. Okay, time to close the tweak menu with L1 and the circle button. Now then they'll stay there, but it'll smoothly mode. move up. This is very interesting. How's that for a magic trick? You can switch back to edit mode, rewind time, and experiment with the keyframe to see what else you can do. Maybe you could try keyframing a tweak menu setting, or animating some elements from the tutorial collection. When you're done, move on to the next step, and I'll show you how to use keyframes on a timeline. Okay. Uh... Got an idea. That'll make it super slow. I think. Yeah, look at that. That's cool. I like it. Keyframes are great for making simple animations. But if you want to make something more complex, you need a timeline. See that little block floating between the last two platforms? Yep. Let's use keyframes on a timeline to animate it. Start by selecting a timeline from the animate menu. Stamp it down somewhere around the last gap. Then you can use the circle button to unequip the gadget. Now open the timeline, hold L1 over it, and press X. Oh, this is the timeline canvas. You can move the canvas with your imp by grabbing it with R2. The numbers along the top are seconds, and you can see it's set to eight seconds by default. If you grab the edges with X, you can extend or shorten the canvas. Try setting it to around six seconds. If you ever need extra space to add more things, you can also extend the bottom of the timeline. Once you're comfortable with moving and resizing the timeline canvas, move on to the next step and we'll start adding things to it. Now, it's time to animate the floating block. Get a new keyframe from the animate menu and stamp it in the scene. Now grab and move the block to its starting position oh, at the edge down. of the platform where Cuthbert's waiting. I missed Once that Once the bit. block's in place... Now, it's time to animate the floating block. Get a new keyframe from the animate menu and stamp it in the scene. Now grab and move the block to its starting position at the edge of the platform where Cuthbert's waiting. Once the block's in place, remember to press the stop recording button in the context menu. Now, grab the keyframe gadget and move it over the timeline. The gadget will snap to it. Place it at the very start of the timeline. Then get another keyframe from the animate menu. We'll use this one to record the block's second position. This time, stamp the keyframe directly onto the timeline. Around the two second mark is good. On the same row as the first keyframe. Move the floating block to the opposite side of the gap. Oops. 
Now stop recording. Hover over the timeline canvas and play controls will appear. Using these controls, you can preview just the timeline without playing the rest of the scene. Select the play button to preview your animation. As you can see, gadgets are only active when the timeline's playhead is over oh, them. Nice. Right. So, when neither of the keyframes are switched on, the block it's goes right back to its original position. Now we need to edit the animation so the first keyframe blends into the second. To do that, open the first keyframe's tweak menu with L1 and the square button. Now that the keyframe is on a timeline, the buttons that were greyed out before are available. These are blend types, and they change how one keyframe merges into the next. Select the linear button, which will blend to the next keyframe at a constant speed. If you press the timeline's play button now, you'll see the platform move smoothly between the keyframed positions. Feel free to try out other blend types and see how they affect the animation. Then move on to the next step when you're ready. <clears throat> so I place the block there and put the keyframe at the start, then put the block there, put the keyframe two seconds over. So one, two. I think it's going to tell me how to trim the rest. We've got the platform moving smoothly now, but we can still improve how it works. Let's begin by making it pause for a moment at the start and finish, so Connie has an easier time getting on. All we have to do is scale the keyframes on the timeline so they last longer. You might want to get up close to the first keyframe before we start. Now, with your imp over the keyframe, Hold the up directional button to extend it. Then do the same with the second keyframe. Now that the keyframes are longer, the blend has become quicker. You can see it for yourself by selecting the play button under the timeline. Uh... If you want to scale a keyframe more precisely, you can do that with its trim handles. Trim handles are the dotted lines at the beginning and end of keyframes. Grab them now with R2 to give it a try. We should get the platform back to where it started now. But instead of adding a new keyframe, we're going to clone the first one. You remember how to clone things, right? Just hold L1 and grab the first keyframe with R2. Now drag it past the second keyframe and place it by releasing R2. Now we just need to add the blending between the last two keyframes. Only this time we'll use a shortcut instead of the tweak menu. Just hover over the space between those keyframes, then hold L1 and press X. There you go, one linear blend added. You can even cycle through different blend types by keeping L1 held and pressing X again. I love shortcuts because I'm lazy. Use the play controls on the timeline to preview the animation. Move on to the final step when you're ready to continue. Now. Because there's some space at the end of the timeline where none of the keyframes are active, the platform just snaps right back to its original position. There's a few ways we could fix this. For example, we could shorten the timeline so there's no gap at the end. We could also lengthen the keyframe animation so it fills up the whole timeline. Or we could turn on Keep Changes in the last keyframe's tweak menu. The last step is tweaking the timeline itself. So, hold L1 anywhere over it, then press the square button to see all of its properties.
The playback speed makes it go faster or slower. But what we're interested in right now is the playback mode. When it's set to once, the whole timeline will play, even if it was only powered for a split second. When it's set to sustain, it will only play when it has constant power. It will stop when it loses power, then resume from that point if it's turned on again. And if it's set to loop, it will repeat over and over as long as it has power. That sounds like the best option for this timeline, so select that one. Okay, it looks like we're good to go. You can close the timeline now by selecting the cross icon in the top right corner. Or you can hold L1 over the timeline itself, then press the circle button. Click L3 to rewind time and test out your changes in play mode. Once you're happy with everything, exit through the door to complete this tutorial. Whoa! Let's slow that down, I think. Way more complicated. <laughs> Was that the whole? It was audio tutorials. Audio makes Chris come alive. I'm gonna leave that there. <clears throat> Soon we'll do audio art. I'll completely learn everything I need to know to begin my my game. I just wanna I'm gonna jump into Sculpture a minute. Start fresh. Right, hold on. Um, maybe this is a bad idea. Um, hexagon. If I hold, I think if I can hold it as well, I can. A bit of madness. I don't know what I would do with this. Uh, it's going to be hard to learn this. How do I now change the colour? Have I got a edit the shape
It's going to take a while to learn what I'm doing with this. It's best way for the tutorials. And then I can then move that. I can. Did I cut? Delete back. Or did I clone it? I can't remember. Uh, L1 and R2. So you can literally create some crazy stuff I don't know what I'm doing right back out do not say that music yeah what was I doing with this I didn't really know what I was doing this is the next tutorial so don't edit Reverb. Sure, I'll be taught all this. That could be the gun, that could be like a gun sound, couldn't it? In a way. I just... Where was the... Hold on. Stereo balance, wow. Stereo width. Rear speakers, this is crazy.
Anywho. I'm, re I'm interested now. I want to keep going, but it's too crazy, isn't it? It's too nuts. So much to learn. How are you going to make that? How are you going to make this? PC, PlayStation 1 startup sound. Somebody's made that. Nuts. Sound effects, instruments, synths. Animation. Crazy. Well, I'll be definitely back with this. And I will make my game. It's called Eggington Smythe in the Woodland Realm. Stay tuned.